Well, we are here. At the end of Aladdin Sane. Welcome. Hi guys. Welcome to Lee Reacts. Hope everyone's having a good day. I know. I am. Honestly, I'm kinda sad though. Because we uh you know, it's just whenever we finish an album, I'm always sad because it means I never, you know, get to do a video again for it, sort of thing. But the caveat for this one because um i don't forget you commenter who said i should do the top of the pops version of the gene genie which i will do in a separate video because um they are very uh on top of their copyright claims shall we say um so no matter what you send through that they're gonna try and block it or take the money for it so i'd rather do that in a separate video because i don't care if they do that you know but i um i do for this one i guess so We'll do that separately, but I do remember you comments, or don't, I, I didn't forget. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be listening to The Gene Genie and the Lady Grinning Soul, which there is two stories behind each one. Um, apparently the protagonist is based off of Iggy Pop in The Gene Genie, and then the second song, Lady Grinning Soul, was apparently written about Claudia Lanier. Um, he met her in 1972 and is often cited as the inspiration for the song. In 2016, after Bowie's death, um, there was an interview with her, and she revealed that Bo uh, Bowie called her in 2014 and uh, told her that the song was about her. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and obviously, this is the last two tracks on Aladdin scene. What a ride it's been. Uh, it's been a little bumpy at points, I'm not going to lie, you know, for the most part, but I, I, it's been smooth sailing, you know, and uh, it's Bowie, so it's going to be, no matter what, it's going to be good, you know. And you might have things you like more than others, but I've come to realize... He's going to deliver <laughs> every time, you know? So, let's go. Y'all are subscribed. Help the brother out. Click that icon right down there. And then leave a like, too, if you don't mind. If you don't mind. All right. That's a weird... So, the first one's got a different cover art. I guess that's like a compilation album or something. All right. The Gene Genie by David Bowie in 3, 2, 1, go. <laughs> Strung out on lasers and slashed back blazers And ate all your razors while pulling the raiders Talking about Monroe and walking on Snow White New York's a go-go and everything tastes nice Poor little greenie That riff Get back on Gene Genie lives on his back Go ahead, Nick. Damn. I'm getting canned heat vibes. <laughs> I just finished that video. Sits like a man, but smiles like a reptile. She love him, she love him, but just for a short while. She scratch in the sand, let go of his hand. He says he's a beautician, sells you nutrition, keeps all your dead hair for making up underwear. Poor little greenie. Mick Ronson is not playing, bro. <laughs> uh. Neither is Woodmancy, damn. So simple minded, you can't drive his module. He lights on the neon and sleeps in a capsule. Loves to be long. Loves to be long. Damn. 
That was sick. <laughs> I love this part. Go! Go! The chain chain that lives on his back. The chain chain that loves Jimmy Stacks. The chain chain that skims on her bones. The chain chain that lets us go. Go! This is a party song right here, man. I bet many a beers were drinking to this song. And joints smoke. What a song. Lady Grinning Soul. Finally. Mike, let's go, baby. I've heard so much. Insane talent already. It's crazy, bro. Spanish guitar too, come on man. It's so romantic. It's like passion in audio form. sax there at the end what a wonderful song man 
Both of those. Those are both home runs right there. Still going. It's like um, the first song was uh, the goodbye from the spiders from Mars. And then this was the goodbye from Bowie or from Ziggy, shall I say. And when I said it all clicked, <laughs> I had this weird idea that he had a daughter. And um, that's why they were saying, you know, she'll be your living heir at, at the end, you know? I don't know if that's the end, because I know this is the end of Ziggy, basically, because it was Ziggy Stardust and this album, right? That's it. That's That was it for this persona, I think. And I think this is it for the Spider from Mars, too, because he went into, like, the Berlin trilogy after this, right? And he started going a little wild, you know? Um, man, where to start with that? Um, uh, I guess I'll start with the first song. Um, if I can get to it, my hair can get out of my freaking face. Whenever I get a haircut every month, it always starts sticking to me for some reason. Um, all right. So not Lady Grinning Soul. No, the Gene Genie, um, blah, blah, blah. English songwriter, David Bowie released in 1972. As the lead single for this album, I see why. That is a hell of a song and a great lead single. Um, apparently, it's a smorgasbord of Amer imagined Americana with pr a protagonist inspired by Iggy Pop, and the title being an allusion to author Jean uh, Jeanette. One of Bowie's most famous tracks, it was promoted with the film clip featuring Andy Warhol, associate Cynthia... Sir Surinda Fox. <laughs> so I guess there was a video for it too. Oh, I didn't know that. Because when I looked it up, I just saw... Um, I did just I did put live into the search though. So maybe that's why the video didn't pop up. But um, maybe I have another video to do then. With uh, I'll do the video for both. Because I, I'm not going to get the money for whatever. You know what I mean? But I guess I can still do that. Because I'd love to see the video for it. Um and the B side of what? So the B side of the Gene Genie is Ziggy Stardust. That's from, that's from the Rise and Fall though. Six singles are such a weird thing, bro. <laughs> so I I didn't have that growing up. I mean, there were singles obviously, but they they weren't like forty fives and stuff. You know, they didn't have B sides, all that. You know, if there was a single, it was released on the radio, or if you were lucky on CD for some reason. You know, and then the album would come out. You know. I, that's how I grew up. I didn't even know about all that. Um, but um, let's see. Hold on. Personnel. Uh, it's Mick Ronson on guitar. Boulder. Trevor Boulder on bass. Uh, Woody on the drums. Uh, David Bowie on lead vocals. Rhythm guitar. And harmonica. And I was going to say, that was Mick's song right there, uh, to be honest. And Bowie's vocals, honestly. And that's the thing. I had said that I wasn't in. I, w I felt like Bowie had taken the back seat for a lot of this album. Not... Like, I feel like, like the middle section a little bit, but that's not a bad thing per se, you know, it just lets the rest of his awesome band fill it in, you know? So I think that was really cool. But like I said, I felt like the first song, the Gene Genie, that was the goodbye from the spiders from Mars. Um, or I could be completely wrong and they, they're on the next album too. I don't know. Uh, but I know he did switch it up, I think after this or maybe the next one, I don't know. But, um, you know, and then the second one is a goodbye from Ziggy. Uh, you know, cause that beautiful, just sweeping piano lines from Mike, man, like that is just incredible. Well, I guess let me finish the Gene Genie before we go there. Um, I definitely would say that's one of my favorite David Bowie songs right there. Easily hands down. I mean, wow. What a riff. What a bluesy atmosphere. That harmonica was just fantastic too. Um, like I said, I recorded, I'm recorded. i recording this right after I finished the long video for Canned Heat's uh, Refried Boogie Part 2. So this felt like almost like the, this video in the beginning felt like a continuation of that video I just finished. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, it's not going to be set up that way. Y'all haven't even heard it yet probably if you're watching a day premiere. It'll be at 12 o'clock and this is probably at 11. So <laughs> it was great. Let's just say that. Um, but it's... <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I just, the way that Bowie can create atmospheres and use textures in his sound that, you know, and then of course have the best musicians possible around him. But the way they all collaborate and just create these almost worlds that you visit as you listen to their music, I think that is um, the high, you know, that's a highlight of any artist. And Bowie does it every album, you know, he's just, <laughs> he's a prolific songwriter and just um, art, the like, auteur. He's an artist, you know, just in general, you know what I mean? Like, it's just everything he makes is artistic. Um, 
you know, even being in the personas and, you know, using masks and using costumes and stuff like who, not many people do that. You know, Peter Gabriel did it in the beginning of Genesis a little bit. Um, of course, there's always people that dress up, but I mean like on like a, a widely appealing, you know, band of sorts. Um, you know, there's a few people, but I feel like, you know, uh, he's very himself, like no matter what he's himself. I, I think that's what's so true about him is that he doesn't really know who he is because we all, none of us know who we are, you know, and at least he's honest about it and he explores the different parts of his psyche, which I think I've also done as well. I've played all kinds of parts in my life, you know, um, and it's all about the human experience and experiencing as much as possible. And, you know, part suffering is a part of life. And it feels like Ziggy, you know, came down, he rose, he fall, and then he comes to America. And to be honest, um, I guess he like likes Americana. He's, you know, Ziggy gets a tour of the country or something. I, I don't understand the actual storyline of this one, if there really is much of one. But it does feel like at the end he has a kid for some reason. It, that's what it sounded like, you know, she will be your living heir. It's a strange line to go out on and repeat it five times. So I don't know if he's talking about a lover, talking about his kid. I don't know. The, the story for this one was kind of, I don't know. Maybe I was just focused on the instrumentals more than the story. But I don't know, man. And you go to the second song, of course, Lady Grinning Soul. Um, absolutely fantastic. And I, I had been hyping that song up. So there was a real high, a real high bar there, mate. <laughs> I don't know where the Australian accent came from. Oh, my God. There's a really high bar I already had in my head for it. <laughs> and then um, it, it, that just completely just right over it, you know. Um, that was incredible. Uh, Mike on the piano, man, he is just, sorry, he is fantastic at that. I mean, I've never heard someone play piano like that. Like, it literally sounded like raindrops falling, you know. Uh, and it, on this album, for for the stuff that even that I said that I didn't like as much, there's only like, there's actually only like one song on this album that I don't like, maybe two. And it's not that I don't like it, I, it's just not my favorite compared to the rest, you know what I mean? Um, but Lady Grinning Soul was Ken Fordham on Ken Fordham on baritone saxophone at the end there, Mike Garson on piano, and then the Spiders from Mars and David Bowie. Um, so yeah, Mike is just a, a fantastic pianist. I mean. What do you, how do you even play like that? Like, I'm trying to picture him in my head what he's doing and like how he's doing it, you know, but it doesn't make sense to me every time I think about it, man. Like, especially here, like, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, it's absolutely wonderful to listen to though. And I want to play it again, to be honest. Um, now like my best uh, comparison to it is just, like I said, it's like raindrops falling, but like an audio form, you know, uh, just like how, um, the first one felt, I don't know. There, he's just really good at eliciting emotion and like, in like I said, in audio form, you can feel whatever he's trying to get you to feel easily, like no matter what. And I think that's one of his, I don't know, best talents is reaching people. You know, like I never would have really listened to him until you know this channel, and he reached out and grabbed me by the throat basically and was like, "You're gonna love my music," <laughs> and I did. Um, even from the very beginning, honestly, like, uh, once we started with station to station and I went through it, man, like, I was like, what is this? You know what I'm saying? I, this whole channel is completely, yeah, completely revolutionized my, uh, musical outlook and taste, everything. Like I always say, and it's crazy. And this, it continues to evolve by the day because we listen to at least three, like amazing songs a day. You know, I think that's really, really good. We're on a hot streak for almost a year now, I think. I don't know how long I've been doing this whole, you know, morning thing, whatever we do. Uh, but we really have been doing some good work. And I appreciate y'all for everything you do. Even though this is my pick and this album was, you know, I just did it. There was no request or anything. But still, I, I just, you guys put me in the right direction. You pointed me east and I just started walking that way. And here we are, right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, that was fantastic. I definitely would say the piano is my favorite part. Um, uh, also Bowie just, or Ziggy, I should even say just screaming out almost. It feels like, an, or not even screaming out, but like, it feels like he's screaming out, but he's not, he's softly singing in a port and then it ports, <laughs> ports. it's kind of, I don't know. It, it picks up a little bit with his vocals and you can just feel the intensity and the emotion, you know, and Bowie's just so good at that. And I feel like he really, 
not even stepped up because that's that's a bad way of putting it. He really shined in these two tracks. Maybe like I said, he took back seat and a couple other ones. He he didn't here, even though everyone else was shining too. He was right there with them, and I thought, and I thought that was great. This is a fantastic album, and I'd say that out of all of them, I have to go back. Let's see. Aladdin Sane, definitely my first favorite track. Uh, all right, so on side one, we'll say this. On side one, Aladdin Sane's my favorite. And on side two, it's either Time or Lady Grinning Soul. I don't know. I can't really pick one just yet. But I can for the first side. Definitely Aladdin Sane. That is one of my top three Bowie tracks now. That song is absolutely nuts. And this is like the yin to the yang of that, you know? And um, I think that's a real good way to close the album as they started it, basically, with the you know amazing piano work from Mike. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to hear whatever we're doing next. If you guys have a suggestion for what album we should uh, tackle next, leave it down below. Or if you want to, you know, send it in as a request and start it off and I'll keep going or something. Patreon right there. Hey, hide. Sorry, AI camera. Um, that's a picture of it. There's a link in the description. Uh, there's certain tiers on Patreon. If you join, you get you know a free request a month, depending on the sun, like the time length of it and such. Um, all the rules are posted on Patreon if you want to check it out. And um, there's also a PayPal as well in the description if you want to send a tip or request it that way. But you get access to our community dis community Discord. Jesus Lee. Um, and you also get access to all the block videos and full album reactions. There's a lot of them on there. It's totally worth it. We'd love to have you. All right, I'm just kidding. Have a good one.